Most of the world will recover to pre-pandemic levels of economic activity by next year. But some countries will find it more difficult than others. That's according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. The Paris-based organization has raised its forecast for the year to nearly 6%. It's also upgraded its outlook for 2022 to nearly 4.5%. The OECD says the rosier picture is due to vaccination efforts and substantial government stimulus across the globe. Now, in Europe, growth is now forecast to be comfortably above 4%. But again, the OECD warns the recovery will be uneven and living standards in many developed economies will take longer to recover. The chief economist at the OECD says the forecasts are the highest in nearly 50 years. The prospects for the global economy have improved considerably in recent months, and the outlook is brightening. So we have revised up our growth projections for 2021 to the highest growth rate since 1973. And that thanks to progress in vaccination, economies coping better with restrictions, massive fiscal and monetary support. The OECD's Laurence Boone there. Well, let's talk to Brendan Brown. He's an economist and founding partner at Macro Head Advisors. Good to see you, Brendan. Now, look, the OECD is forecasting what they call an uneven recovery. So who or where stands out for you and who's falling short? Well, what stands out is that the US and South Korea are already back to their pre-pandemic levels of output. Germany and Japan, by the end of this year, will be at their pre-pandemic le levels of output per head. When you look at the rest of Europe, Britain, France, Italy, it's well into 2022. And some developing countries like Brazil, Argentina, South Africa are going to be into 2023 and beyond. And it's very important to remember. Yeah, sorry, it's very important to remember here that we, it's very important to remember here that this is just getting back to pre-pandemic levels. There's also been a huge cumulative loss of income during that time. Now, you mentioned the UK and um, their growth set to be the fastest among the large, rich economy, um, economies, although you could argue that they've got further to go because they were hit so hard. So let's talk about risk and potential longer term damage, considering the UK also bears those scars of Brexit. Yeah, the risks uh, more generally than for the UK are that the OECD are highlighting is inflation, which is going to be a pickup of prices with various shortages, disruptions, and that this may lead to higher interest rates. So that's one risk. Another risk is clearly on the pandemic itself and whether it um, recedes smoothly or not. I would say a big risk they miss out altogether is that asset inflation, which has been fueled during all this central bank radical action, could for various reasons short circuit. Post-pandemic, how far do you think the investment priority shopping list will, will, will shift? Or do you think we are still looking at things like health, like education, digital transformation and climate transition? Well, health, everyone would agree on, is a priority. priority. But uh, the other items which the OECD is just trying to justify, such as digitalization and uh, environmental, that's much more questionable. Because, first of all, we had a big increase boom in digitalization during the pandemic. And some people would say that in some sectors that may even have gone too far. So it's quite unclear why the state or government should be in any way sponsoring that. Another point one can take issue with the OECD is they're justifying the state coming in and boosting spending because they say interest rates are so low. But interest rates are only so low because central banks everywhere are effectively keeping interest rates very low as a way of taxing their citizens to pay for the vast debt they ran up during the pandemic. So it's a sort of circular argument. Looking ahead as well, the OECD expects volatility on financial markets. I mean, is it, Brendan, is it all about the vaccination drive in the developing world or is that something else at play here? Well, clearly any setback in vaccinations um, will would upset markets, but we're also looking at very high valuations in a wide range of equity and real estate markets, very high leverage in the corporate sector. And of course, for some weak sovereign, sovereigns have huge debts too. So 
there's a whole range of accidents that could occur here. Brendan Brown, Macro Hedge Advisor, it's always a pleasure. Thank you very much for your insight.